and said, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside, when God saw that Moses had gotten serious, you know what? We tell God, oh God, we're serious. We want the power. But let me tell you, God knows when we're serious or not. God knew when Moses turned aside. He said here, and when Mo God saw that Moses turned aside, you can say all you want to. You want the power, but God knows when you really hunger and when you really thirst and after it. He knows when you really pull yourself aside and set your heart to seek God. You got to set your heart to seek the Lord. <laughs> Moses set his heart to see that sight and God said, I saw, God saw that he turned aside. God said, I'll honor it because you pulling aside. Moses, I'm gonna call to you. I'm gonna speak to you. You know, if preachers would pull aside if handmaidens, if servants, if churchgoers, if we would pull aside and seek the Lord, God would call to us. God would speak to us again. God would give us to the Thelma such a supernatural move, but God's waiting for us to pull aside. God is waiting for the church to get back in her prayer closet. Jesus said, go in your prayer closet. Shut the door about you. Seek God. Cry out to him. <laughs> and he said here, Moses said, God said, when I, he said, I saw Moses. He said, when he saw that Moses turned aside, what happened? And when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to see God, see, God called unto him. Whew. Oh, when he set his heart, Sister Shirley, to seek God. When he set his heart to climb the mountain, let me tell you, climbing the mountain's not easy. Go, seeking after God and the power of God, it's not easy because there's a lot of self-denial between you and the, the burning bush. There's a lot of, uh, of self-denial and laying down the flesh and laying down this life between you and getting the power. But if you're willing to lay down your life, if you're willing to seek God, if you're willing to fast and pray, if you're willing to give up this life, you can obtain the power of God. got to quit being satisfied. Preachers got to quit getting satisfied in Jethro's house somewhere. You got to make your mind up. God, I'm sick of staying where I'm at. I'm going to climb the mountain. I'm going to turn aside. I'm going to seek God until I get an answer from God. And he said, and God called unto him every great revival that has ever been on the face of the earth once some man, some woman somewhere turned aside to seek God. Somewhere God stirred up somebody that would come out and, and, and get hungry for more than just the same old, same old settle for religion. Said somebody so they surely got to the place that they said there's got to be more to God than just what I'm seeing. Let me tell you, we've got to get back to that place. I'm telling you, there is more to God than what we've been seeing coming out of the churches in the last 15 years. There's more to God than what's been manifested. Anybody, but Sister Thelma can tell you them revivals back then in them days, they were different than they are now. Them days, they were some men and some women that had some power. They would, then you could call the mother of the church and she could lay hands on you and deliver you. The pastor, the evangelist, the, the, the old Brush Harbor preacher could preach and, and deliver you, but not now. Now we called up in, in religion. We have reached the place now that we need to know that there's more to God than what we've been seeing. <laughs> Midian, jo uh, Jethro was satisfied with a mysterious God. <laughs> Jethro was satisfied over there. Follow, oh, he followed God from afar. You know, that's what people, Sister Shirley, are doing now. They're following God from afar. Ha, I want my God just, I, I want my religion. 
But I don't want none of that way out there stuff. I don't. I, I just want to go to church and get my time in, say I've been at church, and go home and live my life like I've never been there. But you know what? The world is going to hell. Our children is going to hell. We don't need no more preachers in churches. We need deliverers. We need men and women that's got the power to destroy the yoke, to cast out the devils. We need deliverers. Oh, but where we're at, preachers, satisfied where they at, people, come and let's sing. And I ain't got, let me tell you, I love the old songs better than I do these new modern stuff. But we've gotten satisfied. Come on, let's get our two songs out of our book and sing it and let's move on. No, whatever happened to, you know, let me get people into a spirit of praise. Get their mind captivated and caught up. Let's not come to entertain them and play them some bluegrass or, or some rock and roll or some rap. And, oh, let's get in here and bebop. God don't want us to bebop. God wants us to get in here and get into a real praise. <laughs> See, even the song leaders need to hear from God. Whew. Instead of saying, closing your eyes, and let your finger drop on a, on a song. Say, well, let's sing this one. How about getting a hold of God when we come in the house of God? God, which way is your spirit going to move? God, are you leading us in a slow weeping worship? Are you leading us in a fast Holy Ghost deliverance? God, I need to know which way you're going. Come on, that's how we used to do it. <laughs> Whoa, Jesus. And he said there, And he said, verse 4, And the Lord saw that he turned aside, and God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. God called him. God said, Moses. I mean, like God to call you. See, that's what we need. We got too many mama called and daddy sent. We got too many theological people out there. We got too many people out there that, you, oh, they got a degree hanging on the wall. That's what I told my uh, brother-in-law today. I said, they, with the, these Bible colleges are turning out hundreds of preachers at a time. They got plaques on their wall, but they ain't got no power. Let me tell you, the devil, don't fear the plaques you got hanging on your wall. That don't drive out the devil. I got a DDT. I don't care what all the DDTs and all the thing else you got. If you ain't seeking God and full of the word of God, God and the Holy Ghost you ain't got no power if you ain't got no prayer life you ain't got no power <laughs> they don't teach you that well I went to seminary one man said no you went to cemetery you went in there on fire and come out a wet blanket <sighs> amen you went in there with a hunger to do something for God, but you come out religious. Amen. Most of them old preachers, Sister Thelma, that you heard back then, went to these big tents, brush harbors, these big old meetings back in the 40s. And I guarantee you not a one of them went to Bible seminary. No. But they had a power. They had something in them because they fasted and they prayed and they sought God. They got to the place that they got desperate and said, God, I'm tired of the same old, same old and religion. I need to know that there's a real God. And they sought God and God came to them and he touched them and he gave them a power. <laughs> oh, we need that today. He said there, God called. How I many like God to call unto you? Oh, if we will seek God, God will call unto us. If we will pray with all of our heart, if we will seek after God and run after Him, God will call unto us. Hallelujah. And said, Here am I. And Moses said, And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put all thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Oh, God. It's like I said the other service. What was it that made the churches holy back then? It wasn't the way they dressed. It wasn't the way they looked and acted, all that stuff. It was their, what they prayed. 
and sought God so much and they did live a godly life to the point that God hallowed the place where they prayed. For the place that thou standest. You know, the churches used to be holy, hallowed, sacred. You could come into the houses of God and there would be such a spirit of God and such a peace of God. He told him here, man, I've been in services, Sister Shirley, where the preachers would get to preaching and God would get so holy and so powerful in the services, the preachers would say, take your shoes off, we on holy ground. I've been in churches where you had to take your shoes off just to get on the platform because it was so holy and sacred. What was it that made it holy and sacred? Not because they lived a certain lifestyle, but because the presence of God was there. That's what makes the difference. When the Holy Ghost comes down, he hallows it. The platform used to be holy and hallowed, not just anything got on the platform. You didn't get on the platform joking and carrying on and being worldly minded. You had to seek God to get on the platform. Now we let any old thing get on the platform. People come right out of the world, right on the platform. Jump right on the music, grab the song books, do whatever they're going to do. Man, right out the world, ain't even got their mind in God, ain't took no time to pray, ain't took no time to seek God, and we come in here worldly minded. This is hallowed. Oh, this used to be hallowed used to be so full of the presence of God. He said, here said, Moses, take your shoes off. For the ground where you're standing is holy. Why? Because I have come down. Oh, see, that's what we've got to have. That's why used to, you could get in your car, drive up on them old brush harbors or in your wagons back in them days and, and they'd ride them old wagons up on the brush harbors or, or back in the 40s and 30s, you'd get your little old car, drive it up on them big old tent lots and you'd get out and you'd hear that organ whining across the wind and there was chills would run up and down your spine because of the presence of God. Used to, you'd pull up to the sanctuary and the church. You couldn't wait to get in there. You'd get to pull up on the church grounds and there'd be such a power and a spirit of God that rested there. Boy, you could feel it before you ever got in the church doors. Oh, but today it ain't that way, God. We need the presence of God back in the house of God. He said, oh, it's holy, Moses. This is holy ground Put off the shoes from off thy feet for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses and his hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Oh, when was the last time the presence of God filled our room so powerful that you wanted to pull the covers over your head? Oh, when was the last time we sought God until such a spirit? Moses, the Bible said here, said he hid his face because God, Sister Thelma, had come so close. Do you know you can seek God to, to such a point that God will come so close to you that you want to crawl under the carpet? I've been there, come on. I've had God come in the room so close to me at times. I, I wanted to, to crawl under the carpet. I, I've wanted to throw the bed covers over my head and just tremble. Oh, but my God, we, we ain't got that kind of experience no more. Preachers ain't got that kind of, they ain't sought God until the angel of God come to them. They ain't sought God until the presence of God has filled the room. Oh, we used to. Used to, we would spend so much time with God. There was a time that preachers would walk so close to God that they, you could look at them and boy, their face lit up. You could feel, you could stand in the same room with them, Sister Thelma, and you could feel the presence of God just permeating off of their physical body because they spent so much time in the presence of God. Where are these men at today? We need some men that is willing to fast and pray and close itself off and get a real experience from God. 
not just some men, some women, a handmaiden, some servants. He said there he hid his face 